I had to park about six blocks from here and walk because of the barricades and going up through this area. I had water all the way up to my coat here. Um, walking through just shows you how serious this um, situation is right now. Behind me, you can see the Confederate flag that it has stirred so much debate, rallies, and some even say violence for more than half a century. You can see behind me here, there's dozens of police vehicles. They've been here for the last couple of hours. I was just handed a piece of paper with an update. Now 10 dams have been breached. 18 of those are being monitored. Where I'm standing now used to be a portion of U.S. Highway 21, but it was completely washed out in October of 2015's historic flood. Now, nearly 17 months later, people who live around here say they're ready for it to be fixed. He did confirm that this search and rescue mission is still underway. They're still looking for these two missing people. The sun is just starting to come up, but the road has actually broken right here. You cannot cross the road. There's bulldozers out here and uh, tape blocking it off so the people cannot get past. And what happened inside this church is what led to all of this, a fight against the Confederate flag, grieving families, and now a 21-year-old facing multiple murder charges. Well, Janet Bryan, in her words, the state of our state is blessed. This address, as expected, was more of a goodbye than a state of the state, but she did outline many of the things that have been accomplished during her six year tenure. Well, Janet, although we are famously hot, occasionally we will get this kind of weather, which is why airport officials say they do have a plan in place if we get below freezing. It was quite a scene here just a few hours ago when Hillary Clinton was announced the winner of the South Carolina Democratic primary. This is a very significant and an important win for the Clinton campaign. Accused Charleston shooter Dylan Roof walked into a Charleston courtroom Thursday morning where he heard the charges against him. So we, we acknowledge receipt of all 13 indictments at this time. Those indictments include nine murder charges and three attempted murder charges. Although Thursday was a formal evaluation process, the state did not hesitate to suggest the 21 year old could be facing the death penalty. Obviously, this case has the potential. With the national attention the case is receiving, the court ruled that a gag order in the case be maintained until next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Judge J.C. Nicholson says records will not be released before July 22nd to allow prosecutors, defense attorneys, and family members time to object. To the extent you as a judge are going to try to constrict that discretion provided to public custodians, that is where we will oppose a judge doing that. Charleston area attorneys who filed objections to the order argued Thursday that rights to access records are guaranteed by the Constitution. For the complex of location, not to determine access to that. And what happened inside this church is what led to all of this, a fight against the Confederate flag, grieving families, and now a 21-year-old facing multiple murder charges. He deserves the death penalty without a question. Four weeks after the shootings, mourners continue to visit the Mother Emanuel Church, paying their respects and leaving with a sense of hope. With the flag coming down, which has been protesting for a long period of time, it took one incident, one night, to have it taken care of. Our president has been here, so we have actually seen accomplishments. Dylan Roof's trial is set to begin July 11, 2016. His attorney said during Thursday's hearing that one year may not be enough time for them to prepare, but they will do everything they can to be ready. In Charleston, Tara Pettit, Watch Fox News.